Hi, I'm Larry Lapidus. I'm from uh, Empiris Software. I'm going to talk about uh, RISC-V custom instructions, getting started with RISC-V custom instructions. So I'll provide an introduction to Empiris, who we are, what we do, uh, why, why people are using RISC-V. Uh, Empiris uh, RISC-V processor models, developing custom instructions, and uh, then we'll wrap it up in a pretty bow. So let's talk about Empiris a bit. Empiris, uh, uh, our founding team came from the electronic design automation industry and also FPGA and processor IP companies. And uh, our founding team saw the need for tools and, uh, and methodology similar to EDA, but for software debug, test, and analysis. Then five years ago, as RISC-V is starting to come on, uh, Empiris saw that RISC-V was transitioning from academic exercise to a real industrial community. And because we've been building processor models for nearly 15 years, uh, jumping in to support RISC-V was a very natural thing for us to do. In that time, we've been working with uh, a number of customers and, uh, and partners. There's some big names on there like uh, Nagra and NXP and Silicon Labs uh, on, the, on the user side. And then on the partner side, we're working with all the RISC-V processor IP vendors, Andes, uh, Sci-5, Codasip. They're all uh, in pods around here. So you can go talk to them, and we have models of their cores for you. So what about RISC-V? Why are people using it? Well, just some history here. RISC-V was started at the University of California, Berkeley in 2010. Uh, unlike most other instruction set architectures, RISC-V is provided under uh, an open source license. Uh, this is just the architecture, no, though, not the implementation. But uh, unlike other academic designs, which are typically optimized only for uh, simplicity of exposition. In other words, the, it's to uh, make a point for a, for a course. RISC-V was uh, developed and intended to be real world usable. While the instruction set architecture, while the ISA is a comprehensive uh, RISC architecture, the RISC-V specification allows users to add custom features. And it's that freedom and not the free part of open source which is why RISC-V usage is growing so fast. Empiris builds processor models. Actually, we have these processor models on our open virtual platforms website called fast processor models. These are instruction accurate models that are used for architecture analysis, for software development, debug and test, and also for processor and SOC verification. We have models that are generic models of the RISC-V specification. Uh, effectively the whole alphabet soup uh, there the, that is the RISC-V specification. Uh, anything that is uh, actually been ratified or any of the specs that, uh, uh, that are stable. We also have models of the processor IP vendors, uh, as I've mentioned before. Uh, we support all these. Uh, I don't think I mentioned open hardware before. They're over in the corner there. Uh, Sci-5. Codasip behind me and uh, Andy's over in the other corner. Uh, we, also, uh, we also enable people that are building their own RISC-V processor to develop their own processor model. Custom instructions are easily added by uh, the user or by Empiris. These instructions are added in a side file so they don't perturb the, uh, the base processor model. Uh, the custom instructions can then be analyzed for effectiveness. And the models uh, are built using a test-driven development methodology. So we're writing tests for each feature that we add to the model. That's, we're trying to ensure very high quality uh, for the models. Uh, we use a continuous integration test flow. Uh, we've got 15 to 20,000 tests that we run every time developers check in code. Uh, and actually, additional testing is done by those processor IP vendors uh, before they certify us as a reference model. This is the basic architecture of the processor model. There's a simulator engine. On top of that sits the base reference model that supports the full RISC-V specification. There are now more than 250 different parameters in our model so that you can 
do anything that you want within the RISC-V specification. But if there's more that you want, the custom instructions, then that's where that extension library comes into play. So it's a very simple uh, architecture here. What it does is ensure that this base model, this base reference model is as well verified as possible for every implementation, every configuration that people are using. So this model is architected for easy extension and maintenance. So what about custom instructions, that, that freedom part of, uh, of RISC-V? So typically, custom instructions are added to optimize a specific application or set of applications within a domain. And therefore, what you want to do is start by characterizing uh, the application to be optimized, and then add the custom instructions, evaluate, and iterate. And that's what we're starting to do here in this first block. I'll keep on adding blocks as we go here. But the first thing is to characterize the C application using the instruction accurate simulation that we provide uh, using trace and debug tools and function profiling. So here we're going through the simulation. In this example, we're actually using a, a character stream encoder with a ChaCha20 encryption algorithm. So we're adding uh, ChaCha20 specific custom instructions. Uh, this was a cross-compiled C application targeting a 32-bit RISC-V core, uh, and then instruction accurate simulation. And the basic simulation actually runs quite fast. It's over 1 billion instructions per second. Uh, I think it's 1.15 billion instructions per second. In addition to just simulating, we're also using some tools on this. Uh, in this case, using that same C application, we're doing uh, profiling of this and uh, looking at the proportion of time spent in each application uh, function. And we see that 21.35% of the uh, execution time is spent in the process line function. So now we're going to go and develop the new custom instructions, design these, add them uh, to the application, add them to the model as required, and then we're going to simulate again. So we've done this, we've added those uh, instructions as a new extension library to the model. We've compiled and linked that extension library and then simulate it. And then actually we, we see just on a very basic uh, test here that both the instruction count, the number of instructions executed, and the simulated uh, time have been reduced. That doesn't really tell us a whole heck of a lot. Now we go back to the profiling, uh, the instruction accurate simulation plus those custom instructions. Uh, again, looking at the slowest function, but it's now a lot faster. Instead of 21.35%, uh, we're now at 14.71%. So that's uh, effectively a, a third reduction in your, uh, in your time spent in that key bottleneck uh, process. So that's what we've done here. We've taken this uh, C application, we've characterized it, developed the new custom instructions, characterized, and then actually what you would do is iterate this to optimize your custom instructions. Following that, there's some additional optimization and documentation. Uh, you would want to do uh, line coverage to make sure that you're verifying that, uh, uh, the, the complete model. And then you want to go ahead and deploy this. So you've got documentation there, and now you can check your RISC-V uh, compliance. You can use this as a reference for design verification. You can use it in virtual platforms for software development. Uh, you can do debug and use other analysis tools, bring up your uh, OS or your real-time operating system. Uh, you can use this in a system C environment. You can also deliver this to end users. One of the cool things about custom instructions in the Empiris environment is that when you build them that way, the software debug and analysis tools automatically work with those custom instructions. So here we show in the Empiris debugger uh, the custom instructions and the state registers showing up in the, uh, in the uh, Eclipse debugger that we have. And then on uh, the, uh, the, the trace here, 
we're also able to show the new instructions. So nothing special needed to be done. We've just automatically made it happen. So what does all this mean? Custom instructions are a, are a key reason for using RISC-V. The models can help a lot with the development of custom instructions, optimizing those, speeding the development of the custom instructions. And Empiris has developed a modeling library and methodology for adding and analyzing those custom instructions. Thank you.